ustedes. Democrats now blaming the super committee's super failure on the GOP's refusal to raise taxes, and they are pointing fingers at this man, Grover Norquist, outspoken anti-tax lobbyist. Washington insiders say the Norquist no tax pledge, which a lot of Republicans have signed in Congress, basically killed the possibility of compromise inside the super committee. So. The Democrats making Norquist an issue, does that put added pressure on the GOP? David Drucker joins us, staff writer for Roll Call. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Before we talk about Norquist, is there any incentive for Republicans to now change course, do an about face, and accept tax increases any time between now and the November elections? No, there's no incentive. They don't believe in it. They think it would be bad for economic growth. And Republican primary voters across the country, by and large, would throw them out of office if they decided to raise taxes on any income bracket. I think there's room for doing away with corporate loopholes because the idea of crony capitalism has really taken hold in Republican and conservative circles. But if you're talking about raising taxes, forget All right. it. All right, let's talk about Norquist now and the super committee because here's what uh, you folks wrote in roll call, and I'll quote it. We'll put it up on the screen. After huddling with members of the Republican Study Committee on November 15th, Norquist started encouraging members of Congress to formally oppose any tax increase being part of the super committee deliberations. Two days later, 72 House Republicans sent a letter to the committee urging members not to raise taxes. How much of a role did Norquist really play in the failure of the super committee? I think Norquist might like to think he played a huge role but he didn't in the sense that it's not like he came up with this idea to oppose tax increases and then threatened Republicans that he would ha he would create voter opposition to them if they did this when senator toomey came out with his plan that caused this reaction and it was going to do away with some uh, deductions for high earners even as it lowered rates and made the bush tax cuts permanent there was a huge reaction in conservative circles outside of Washington, a lot of bloggers and commentators threatening Republicans, saying it would split the party and saying that it would cause them a huge problem. There are many groups that oppose these kinds of tax increases, and they have been around for a long time. I think right. what Grover Norquist has done over the years is harness a sentiment that already exists, and it's convenient politically and possibly smart to go after him because maybe you can show that Republicans aren't opposed to tax increases on principle. They're simply afraid of some guy. But I don't think, I right. think that's overly simplistic. You know, I ran into Norquist. We had an off-camera conversation and he predicted the failure of the super committee at the time and suggested, you know what, that's not a bad thing. And then he explained to me why. He said, look, the, the cuts don't kick in till 2013. In the interim, of course, there's a huge election. That could change the political landscape in such a way, presuming that Republicans win, and I think that's what he was intimating, such that major tax reform could be undertaken, and then voluntary, severe, and deliberate spending cuts could also be undertaken. I mean, is that a pretty good point? I think a lot of people in Washington, both Democrat and Republican, thought that a bad political deal would have been worse than simply any deal because they think that they can fight it out in the 2012 elections and whoever wins can do whatever they want. The triggered cuts from the failure of the super committee don't go into effect until 2013 and therefore they may never have to happen. I wonder how much of a political weapon uh, Norquist will become on behalf of Democrats to thrash Republicans. That here's, in, I can just envision the political ads that'll be airing on television. Here's the man who controls Republicans in Congress, and they'll try to portray him as nefarious. And that's probably inevitable. Norquist will be a scapegoat. Yeah, he probably will be, but I don't know that it'll work. It's similar to, Demo to Republicans trying to make Democrats. Um, union lackeys. It really, at the end of the day, doesn't work by and large. But I think particularly in 2012, because it's a presidential cycle, everything's going to be about President Obama versus his Republican opponent, and all of the House and Senate races down the ticket are going to be defined by that, particularly House races. Some Senate races can separate and will. Yeah. But Norquist, I think it's fun to talk about in New York and Washington. <laughs> he, not as many people outside of, the, of, of those circles know who he is nor care. They I, only care about the policies. To. They care about 
taxes going up or down. They care about Social Security and Medicare, reformed, overhauled, spending cut or not. And that's really what will define a lot of these races, I think. A hero to some, a villain to others. We're going to hear a lot more and see a lot more of Grover Norcrest, I, I predict, in the next year. David Drucker, good to see you here in New York for a change instead of Washington. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks for having me. All right. Heather?